Now, events prompting a national conversation about race. The catalyst of those protests were the tragic deaths of young men and a feeling that law is not always applied evenly in this country. Tonight, a focus on South Florida. While I was on my knees, the cuffs behind my back, the bus rolled by, and I thought about how embarrassing it would be if members of my congregation saw me wondering if I had committed a crime. How race matters, policing by the numbers, a five-month CBS4 investigation. And we wanted to understand the real cause of the tensions between the police and some members of our community. Tonight, CBS4 investigator Jim DeFiti delves into the numbers of who is being arrested and why. Got undercover profiling, handcuffing people, detaining them for no reason. I sure would like to know the reason. This was the scene in August when a group of plainclothes Miami-Dade police officers pulled onto a dead-end street in South Dade and arrested Tanny Burke after they found a marijuana cigarette on the ground near where he was standing. Hey, hey, yo, yo, can I get the bad number name? Burke has been legally blind since birth. He blind, damn Y'all don't tell him y'all walking to the car, I don't, don't know. According to Burke, rather than take him to jail, the officers decided to teach Burke a lesson and took him for a ride. After 20 minutes, they dropped him off miles from his home on the edge of some darkened farmland. You told him you were blind. Yes, I told him in the car I was blind and I couldn't see. Did they seem to care? Not that I know of. They put me out somewhere where ain't no street lights at and no houses. The incident is now under investigation by Internal Affairs. Nevertheless, we were curious about this special unit of plainclothes officers who jump out at folks from unmarked cars. What we learned is they're called a crime suppression team. The man who recorded Burke's arrest was his stepfather, Marvin Armstrong. Tired of them abusing their authority. Tired of them because, all because the color of your skin make you less of a human being. And, and you're tired of it, man. I'm tired of it. To try and understand precisely how the crime suppression team in South Dade works, CBS4 News conducted a five-month investigation. We reviewed every arrest members of the team made in 2014, and working with a group of journalism students at the University of Miami, created a database detailing every case. What we found was a unit that racked up hundreds of arrests, mostly of young black men, for petty offenses. Although blacks comprise just 27% of the population in the South District, 67% of the people they arrested were black. 76% were for misdemeanors. 96% of their cases were for nonviolent offenses. 65% were misdemeanor marijuana cases. And of the 245 individuals this team arrested for marijuana, only two ended up being convicted. That's just two out of 245. State Senator Dwight Bullard represents South Dade. We're talking about uh, police procedures that, that victimize really uh, communities of color. Uh, I take serious offense and have a real problem with that. Robert Brooks, the senior pastor for the St. Peter's Missionary Baptist Church in West Perrine, said he believes that simply being a black man automatically makes you suspect to the police. I can name at least four cases that stands out. Four it, times where you've been stopped by police. Stopped and mistreated, or, or by my standards mistreated. I wasn't roughed up, not physically, but disrespected, spoken to as if I was already a suspect. He recalls one instance when a group of plainclothes officers jumped out at him as he was riding his bicycle. I remember particularly while I was on my knees with cuffs behind my back, the bus rolled by, and I thought about how embarrassing it would be if members of my congregation saw me wondering if I had committed a crime. Despite the way he's been treated, he continues to work with the police and credits the commander of the South District for improving relations between the police and the community. Nevertheless, he said the actions of the crime suppression team and others are undermining her work. There is a bad seed that's creating a wedge between the community and the police. J.L. Dems is the unofficial mayor of Goulds and president of the Greater Goulds Optimist Club. What truly upsets Dems is that there are officers who think they can get away mistreating and abusing people in this community because they are poor and black. I can see if I was that type of officer and I worked in a particular community, there's folks that I could pull over every day. I can mistreat them because they're not going to 
they're not going to have an attorney. They're not going to. They're not going to stand up for themselves. They're not. They're not going to do it. For Miami-Dade Police Major Andrean Bird, who oversees the South District Station and its crime suppression team, the issue of police targeting blacks is not an abstract concern. Because I'm African American, I do have that experience from both sides of the street. I still have those same concerns for my own son and my own grandson. Whether or not they're going to go out, whether or not they're going to be profiled. All I'm saying, I'm not saying to you that it doesn't happen. I'm not saying it doesn't happen because as an African American mother, I believe it does. What I'm saying to you is, I don't think my CST was actively engaging in that type of behavior. Tomorrow night in part two of our series, you'll hear more from Major Byrd. You will also hear from a former police chief who disbanded his crime suppression team because he thought it was causing more problems than it solved. Much more ahead. And now he is a four-time Super Bowl champ and married to